Greetings, math people. Uh, these are my five tips for math success. So do these things in your math class for optimal results. Number one, prepare in advance. So whether you're, you're in uh, secondary school, gonna start a new year, or you're in, in college, are gonna start a new semester, you know the math courses you're gonna take pretty well in advance of actually showing up for the class. So stop prepping, start learning some of the introductory concepts of those particular courses, which will make the beginning of the course a lot easier for you, particularly you know in the days and times we live in where so much is at your fingertips via YouTube and Google and all these different other uh, electronic means. You know, back in the day, you'd have to get the textbook early and go into the textbook uh, prior to class. But these days, you can pretty much just look up things on Google and YouTube and get a lot of vital information just to give you a bump up or a head start before the class starts. It'll make the class begin so much smoother if you begin reviewing and introducing your, yourself to the material prior to class beginning. And once class gets going and the teacher or professor says, okay, uh, next class or in, in days to come, we're gonna cover such and such topic. You should be looking up those topics uh, prior to that time when it's covered in class. It would just make when it's covered in class that much more easier for you in most cases. Number two, study. Now math, you know, it's, it's not a course where uh, you're going to prosper with just rote memory. Rote memory. There's very few math courses where just memorizing a bunch of things is going to make you be very successful in the course. However, every math course does have certain things that must be memorized. You know, in trig, you got to memorize your trig values. Uh, in algebra, you got to memorize uh, different rules point slope form, uh, the slope formula, all these things. So in, in every particular course, there are formulas and theorems and properties that you do have to memorize. So have study and have those memorized. But in addition in your study, you're not just studying facts that need to be committed to memory. You're also studying problems you did in class and you're looking at looking over the problems you did and not just seeing how the problem was done, but understand why the problem was done this way. And when you're looking at your, your different identities and properties, trying to understand why this particular property works. So using studying to try to enhance your conceptual understanding of the material, the further and further you go in mathematics, the better conceptual understanding you have of the material, not just being able to do uh, some little algorithm to solve a problem, but the more better conceptual understanding you have of material, the more better your mathematical life uh, is gonna be as you go into more and more uh, advanced topics. Number three, do problems. You've probably heard it a million times, you learn math by doing math. So pretty much in any course you're in, uh, there's gonna be problems assigned to you, whether you're in, in high school or middle school or college, of course, do those. Um, those are typically things that are graded, at least in secondary school and college, they may be graded, may not be. Even if you're in college and they're not graded, do all those problems in your problem set. And you also wanna do problems in addition to the problems that are assigned to you. So teachers, professors assign problems to help you understand the material, help you master the material. Again, you learn math by doing math. And in some cases you may think that they sign quite a deal of problems to do, but really they never assign enough. So as much as it may seem to you, they're really not assigning enough that you need to maximize your true potential in understanding the material. So if time permits, I ask you to do problems in addition uh, to the problems that is being assigned to you. If you're doing problems in a book and say you got numbers uh, one through 30 even, do the odds as well. Or if you're doing problems, just a, a random problem set sheet outside of a book and you do have the textbook, when you finish the problem set, also do the problems in the textbook, or you can find problems online. Just do problems. You wanna do problems 
harder than the type of problems that, that you would see. And as you're doing problems, again, you're always thinking about why you're doing what you're doing and trying to build that conceptual understanding. But you can never do enough problems. So as much as much as time allows, do as many problems as humanly possible. You'll only get better from it. Number four, ask questions. So some people just through personality, uh, they're, they're quiet and they don't ask questions. Uh, some people, uh, it's not necessarily that they're just quiet and don't ask questions. Uh, they think, you know, if they ask questions, they'll be perceived as uh, being not, not intelligent. That's why they have questions. Listen, everyone has questions. If you're cut, covering a new course, so everyone sitting in the class hasn't taken this course before and if they have taken it before they were unsuccessful so we're all learning this new material together now again there are some people in the class that have looked at this material ahead of time hopefully you'll be one of those people and so they've kind of seen it before but still in essence you're all learning the material together so there will obviously be questions even if you're a mathematical genius there has to be questions so whenever a question arises I beg you just to ask the question because asking a, a simple question of something that's that's bothering that's something that doesn't click and having your instructor answer it uh, could unlock an understanding that otherwise could remain locked so always remember uh, to ask questions and if possible like as soon as the question you know as soon as the question arises i would ask it uh, versus maybe waiting the office hours you know or, or a day or two later and asking the question, I would ask it right as it arises, because that'll be the the best time uh, for for the answer to that question to germinate uh, and flourish. All right. And number five, persevere and believe in yourself. So again, uh, the higher you go, you know, in more and more advanced math courses. Uh, maybe you're at the point now where every math course you take, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. But at, at some point, uh, there's going to be a math course guaranteed uh, uh, that's going to challenge you and it's going to present to you material that is going to be very difficult uh, to comprehend. And for some people who have been, you know, very good at math all, all their life, and then when they finally incorporate that, uh, that's that's a scenario that's really hard uh, to digest and, and deal with. And some people freak out a little bit and think something is wrong. Uh, uh, some people blame uh, the instructor to doing something wrong because I've always gotten math. Well, math has levels. And as you matriculate up the mathematical ladder, things become more complicated. And as things become more complicated, uh, there's a higher probability of you having, have, of you encountering material that is difficult for you to understand. But again, the key is to persevere and believe in yourself. So this could be a case where you see something you don't understand, you ask the question and you still don't understand. You go back, you read the book and you still don't understand. You look at some YouTube videos and you still don't understand, but keep persevering. Uh, ask additional questions, read the book again, uh, see how it's expressed in maybe a different book. Just keep keep on going and try to make sure you're you're unturning every stone in order to allow you uh, to understand the material. And there may be topics, uh, quite honestly, that you'll cover that you may never fully understand. It just gets like that sometimes. Again, as you go to more and more advanced levels of mathematics, but you still persevere and keep digging, keep grinding, and always while doing this, you have to believe in your ability to understand the material. So if you're, if you're doing all this stuff, but don't really believe in your ability to understand it, eventually it will lead to nothing because eventually you'll stop because you don't believe. So while doing this, you have to believe in your ability to understand the material and just keep fighting, keep digging, don't quit, persevere, and keep trying and trying, and then hopefully you'll finally get to the point where, okay, I finally understand this particular topic. And you know, when you go through that type of situation where you have something that was 
initially very difficult to understand. And it took a lot of time and effort to try to understand it. And when you finally understand it, it is a very beautiful feeling. So that's my spiel of the things students need to do to be successful in any particular math course. Again, so we want to prepare in advance, study, do an infinite number of problems, ask questions, persevere, and believe in yourself. We'll see you next time.